Hello everyone and welcome to the good old gamer. So today we're going to test if more cores equals more future proofing. So today we're going to be checking out the old Ryzen 9 3950X 16 core 32 thread CPU because that's around when this more cores equals more future proofing thing started to actually become a thing. So we're going to test that out here today. But first, in the near future past of 1997, the AI scourge destroys humanity. And today we need your help to fight the onslaught of the inevitable AI scourge wiping us all out. We have a sponsor here that can help save the whole world. Today's video sponsor, VIP UR CD Keys, are offering 25% off of Windows 10 and Microsoft Office activation keys. And science has proven that the not activated Windows is what leads to the creation of our new and future AI overlords. So use the link in the description below, get 25% off using promo code UKGG, and you can get 25% off your Windows license keys and Microsoft Office keys. And then go ahead, if you don't already know, just type activate in your search bar, go ahead and change your CD key, and boom, you're done. And you, my friend, are on the way of fighting the AI machine that seems inevitable at this point without your help. And now future Chris here is going to get back into the fight. Die, Roomba, die! So real quick, I want to give a shout out to My Little Pony. He sent over the 3950X for testing. This is a top tier bin. If you missed the live stream, we're running at 4.35 gigahertz all core on 16 core 32 thread. And then when I did the eight core 16 thread, I got that up to 4.5 gigahertz. The same as my 3700X that I did last year. Now this one was able to achieve an F clock of 1900. That means we're using DDR4 3800 and this is tuned Samsung B die. So basically the absolute best case scenario for this old Zen 2 CPU. So that came out in 2019 and we're going to be comparing it to a 2022 six core or six core. We're going to be comparing it to the i5 13600K. Why? Because I had it on hand and I wanted to see what a CPU from three years later that costs half as much, meaning if you bought a 3700X instead of a 3950X and then just upgraded to an i5 uh, 13600K, the cost would actually be the same besides platform and all of that, of course. But in terms of just CPU cost, you'd spend the same money had you gone that route. So in this video, we're gonna look at 16 core 32 thread on the 3950X compared to eight core 16 thread. And then we're also gonna see how it compares to a six core, six core CPU just a few years later. So let's go ahead and check that out. All right, so we're gonna actually start off with the 1440p numbers. Uh, of course, we're just taking a look at the 1% lows because, well, that determines how well the game actually plays. So right now, we're just gonna look at the 3950X with 16 core 32 thread versus the 13600K with DDR4. And as we can see here, well, even under a potentially GPU bound scenario, not likely with an RTX 4090, but can happen even at 1440p, the 3950X gets absolutely curb stomped uh, next to the 13600K, which comes in at 41% faster on the 1% lows. Now, taking a look at the 1080p numbers, which will be the most CPU bound, um, pretty much the same thing that we saw before, except actually a little bit worse. What's more interesting is when we look at the 3950X with eight core 16 thread, Remember, this one is actually running a little bit faster at 4.5 gigahertz all core. Um, we can see that it's actually losing in most of the benchmarks. This is not something that I was expecting. You can see somewhere in Cyberpunk here, like that's actually a sizable uplift. Some games, not really a big deal. Margin of error, margin of error. A eh, little bit of a win, maybe margin of error there. Um, and then there are games where there's actual regression with the uh, higher core count. So it's actually a very interesting look at how these CPUs just kind of function differently. But overall, the 1% low is one FPS higher with the 16 core 32 threat. So it's basically a nothing burger. But as you can tell, it's kind of on a game by game basis, which configuration is actually better. 
Now, when looking at the 13600K, well, that's better all the time. And by how much? At 1080p, we're now 61% faster over the 3950X. With a nine game average coming in at 153 FPS on the 1% low for the 13600K, and we have 96 for the 3950X. So we go from not high refresh capable to high refresh capable just three years later, going from an i9 to an i5 or an R9 to an i5. So already guys, there's actually a lot to take away from this. So first off, having more than the eight core 16 thread on the 3950X did net a little bit of a performance boost. I actually was not expecting that. Most games that I tested last year, which are most of the games that are even still in here, didn't really scale that well. Now, in reality, overall, our 1% lows went up one FPS. I mean, it was margin of error, but there were a few games that you could definitely tell that more cores is actually superior. Before somebody asks, what about 16 core, 16 thread? I tested it. It's identical as the 16 core 32 thread. There's just no point in turning SMT off. Um, now, that was pretty interesting, but of course, compared to a more modern six core, which is actually a 14 core, if you count the E cores, E cores were on in this particular test, but even with E cores off, it's not going to make that big of a difference. Or will it? That will actually be a future video. But, anyways, the cost difference is the same. We consider the 13600K, uh, 12600K, basically to be six cores with a little bit of extra on there. And uh, yeah, that's an absolute bloodbath. So this really takes this whole notion of, well, just buy this really high core count CPU today, and then you don't have to worry in the future. Now, granted, you will see performance gains, as we did see in some of the games. Uh, had you bought a 3700X, that's what we were simulating with a core 16 thread, you'll get a little bit better performance out of the 3950X but it's minuscule and basically not a big deal. Instead, it makes more sense to buy a cheaper CPU, so let's say like a Ryzen 5 or an i5 CPU, and upgrade more frequently than it does to go ahead and just spend a whole bunch of money on the biggest high core count CPU that there is. Now, there are going to be some situations that are gonna be a little bit different. You can look at something like a 13900K, that's obviously going to do very well at gaming, as it's got the eight uh, P cores, and then you have the 16 E cores, which does very well for multi-thread workloads. So if you do work and game, something like that will carry about as well into the future, for gaming anyway, as something like a uh, 13700K or so on and so forth. But on the AMD side, it's very clear that the dual CCD, there's obviously some sort of latency there, um, which we will kind of dive into, uh, into in the future. We're gonna take a look at the E-Core scaling in an upcoming video uh, with the Intel chips, and you can just tell that the scaling is much better on the Intel side right now because it is a monolithic chip. Which also begs the question, how is Meteor Lake and Hour Lake going to perform? So the testing that I'm going to be doing here in the not too distant future will kind of uh, be useful in the uh, coming years with those new CPUs, see how their MCM design goes. So the moral of this story here is don't worry about buying high core count CPUs. Buy the CPU with the highest single thread IPC, the highest clock speeds, that sort of stuff. That's what games really, really like. I wouldn't recommend anything less than a six core 12 thread CPU. The Intel CPUs with the E-Cores, they do make a difference. And like I said, I will show you that here in the not too distant future. Uh, so you'll be just fine with those. So something like a 13600K is going to be very, very good, uh, even next to like an eight core 16 thread CPU moving down the road. But if you're somewhere in that range, eight core 16 thread for the foreseeable future, you're going to be just fine. And by the time you need more CPU cores, you can get something that is significantly faster than the 7950X for example, which is the highest core count CPU from AMD right now. So instead, just buy the eight core 16 thread if you're going AMD. And with Intel, it gets a little more complicated and we'll talk about that in the next video. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. You don't wanna miss that one. That's gonna be a very interesting video. I actually have to do further testing um, because new information came to light. I do wanna thank uh, Ivan over from the Frame Chasers channel. He told me something funky might be going on with Windows, which is 
Another thing that we have to look at. Always more stuff here. I want to thank you all for your support. If you're interested in picking up any of the stuff that I recommend, affiliate links are down below. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe over on the Techonomics podcast, where I go live every week on Monday with Paul from Not an Apple Fan. Links are down below. But that's really all I have for you guys here today, and I will catch you guys in the next video.